Thank you all for coming to this important part of the Benjamin Rush Institute program. I'm Steve Gabby, former chair of OBGYN, emeritus CEO, and presently professor of obstetrics and gynecology, and I'm very honored to introduce someone that I have worked with and known for many, many, many years. We uh, were on faculty together at Los Angeles County Women's Hospital, University of Southern California, back in the 70s. Dr. Artal then went on to establish himself as one of the world's experts in exercise in pregnancy and exercise physiology in pregnancy. He continues to be a leader in that field. The guidelines that we as obstetrician gynecologists follow around this country and around the world are really based on his research. I know it's hard to imagine, but when he first began this field of investigation, uh, pregnant women were generally discouraged from exercising. And that has evolved dramatically to the point now where we encourage our pregnant patients to exercise at least 30 minutes a day, five days each week, thanks to Dr. Artal's important research. He's also a member of a commission that advises the Olympic Committee on exercise for women who are Olympic athletes. But the subject he's gonna talk about today is one that is of great interest, I'm sure, to all of us, particularly to Dr. Artal, he'll explain why and something that I've thought about a lot since I was a child because I was raised with a Holocaust survivor who, not surprisingly, wouldn't talk much about what had been her experiences. So I, as many members of my family, many members of our faith have done, is to explore both through reading, through contacts, and through visiting some of the concentration camps, our past history. And I'm really looking forward to hearing Dr. Artal give us his very unique perspectives on this subject. Raul, please. Well, Dr. Gabby, Steve, uh, thank you very much for this very kind introduction. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you today. and. Uh, uh, it's a particularly important topic, and uh, uh, I wish to applaud your uh, activities and efforts uh, on the uh, uh, subject. Uh, just one disclosure. <clears throat> I don't just talk about exercise. I also exercise every morning myself. I'm in the gym uh, for at least one hour, so... Uh, uh, that's the only disclosure that I have right now. No other conflicts of interest. <coughs> uh, except maybe one. A couple here, I serve uh, on the advisory boards of a couple of companies. And uh, 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 your organization uh, has the name of Benjamin Rush, BRI, uh, for generations. Uh, medical education emphasizes humanity, uh, and uh, your society, uh, I applaud, adopted Benjamin Rush uh, principles. As a founding father and one of the five physicians that signed uh, the Declaration of Independence, and who was quoted as saying, unless we put medical freedom in the Constitution, the time will come when medicine will organize into an undercover dictatorship to restrict the art of healing to one class of men and deny equal privileges uh, to other. Uh, medical ethics is currently guided by ethical standards that have evolved over many centuries. Historical and political events, social and legal considerations, uh, and continuous medical and technological advances have led to the uh, uh, prevailing uh, uh, rules that we follow nowadays. Uh, however, uh, for two millennia or so, 
uh, the, uh, and for generation physicians have taken the Hippocrates uh, oath, uh, which has changed a little bit over the years, but also many times have ignored it. Uh, and uh, you are all familiar with the oath. Uh, I swear by Apollo physician, by Asclepius, by health, by panacea, and by all good uh, gods and goddesses, making them my witness that I will carry out according to my ability and judgment this oath. And so <clears throat> did the nurses. The nurses take a different pledge called the Florence Nightingale uh, pledge. Some uh, nursing schools are abandoning this pledge uh, because they found uh, some of the language objectable, particularly the line that says, this loyal will I endeavor to aid the physician, uh, implying that whatever physician orders should be carried out. However, uh, the axiom uh, has persisted over two millennia. Primum non nocere, first do no harm, no maleficence. The current ethical principles <coughs> are respect for patient autonomy, beneficence, the obligation to promote the well-being of patients, non-maleficence, cause no harm or injury, and certainly uh, justice. Uh, However, there was a slippery slope over the two millennia. Throughout history, we find that the, the wish to play God, racism, xenophobia, and uh, science were periodically intertwined. Could it reoccur? Not only could it, but it does. It all started with uh, a name very familiar to you, Charles Darwin, who used to say that uh, natural selection was the survival process governing most living things in a world of limited resources and changing environments. It was uh, uh, Charles uh, Darwin's uh, cousin, Francis uh, Galton, uh, who first coined the uh, term of eugenics uh, which from Latin means uh, well-born race in 1883, and then Friedrich Nietzsche in Twilight of the Gods in 1889 proposed a morality for physicians, a morality for physicians. The sick man is a parasite of the society, and for certain conditions, it is indecent to live longer. Eugenics was the study of the agencies under social control to improve racial qualities by abortions and sterilization of less desirable. Uh, Galton, uh, the cousin of Dalvin, was one of the pioneers. Things that happen in our country here, and uh, let's know, uh, even to obstetricians, gynecologists, is the Schlendorf, which was a uh, milestone in medical ethics, uh, rarely mentioned. Uh, Schlendorf was a woman complaining of abdominal pain. A surgeon gynecologist recommended examination under anesthesia to determine the cause of her pain. During the surgery, the exam, uh, the physician did not find any cause. However, he decided to do a laparotomy and a hysterectomy without her permission. This woman sued the uh, physician in the hospital. This was the first in the United States. Never happened before. And the New York State of Court of Appeals in 1914 came out with uh, uh, this uh, uh, decision. Every human being of adult years and sound mind has a right to determine what shall be done with his own body. And the surgeon who performs an operation without his patient's consent commits an assault 
for which he is liable and damages. 1914, buried in some books. Very few physicians know about this milestone in medical ethics in the United States. But about the same time, the eugenics movement took off. It became very popular, very popular in the States. Uh, and um, uh, here is the logo from the Second International Eugenics Congress, uh, emphasizing that eugenics is deeply uh, rooted into genetics, anthropology, statistics, uh, uh, sociology, medicine, and so on. Uh, became very popular around the world, in, in uh, uh, England, in Sweden, in Brazil, and even in Russia. And the Russians were the first to, among the first to have a journal of uh, eugenics. Uh, how many of you speak Russians? Uh, a few. Ruski Evgenijevsky Journal. That's what it says. However. Eugenics became most popular in the USA. <clears throat> Courses were taught at Columbia University, at Brown University, Northwestern University, Cornell, and University of Wisconsin. About the same time, another first occurred is that state eugenic law was enforced, and forced sterilization uh, was uh, introduced in, in the States uh, for the unfit and was repealed in, only in 1974 in Indiana. And the last state to repe uh, repeal uh, for sterilization actually was the state of Oregon in 1981. As a resident in Cleveland at uh, uh, Case Western Reserve, I remember during my residence in 73, uh, there were um, two private practitioners who uh, did, uh, performed uh, forced sterilization on, on uh, young uh, women or uh, uh, teenagers that were considered uh, uh, to have immoral behavior. In 1927, uh, the Supreme Court uh, actually permitted compulsory sterilization of the unfit in, uh, in the States. And uh, as I said, it continued until, until 81 in the state of Oregon. 70,000 Americans were forcibly sterilized for eugenic reasons. In uh, uh, the third International Eugenic Congress was held in the States because it was so popular here in the States. Uh, Alfred Platz, himself a eug eugenist, uh, coined in 1895 uh, that the term of Rassen Hygiene, uh, racial hygiene. And in 1933, he wrote that Hitler would bring racial hygiene into the mainstream of the world. And he did. Hitler was greatly influenced by uh, the racial hygienist and included the eugenic uh, racist theories in his book, Mein Kampf. Uh, the Nazis in, uh, quickly enacted the Sterilization Act, but uh, it, it became extremely popular in, uh, in Germany, and it was modeled, uh, ironically, after the American eugenics uh, uh, society. Eugene Fisher was the head and professor of medicine, anthropology, and eugenics at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, uh, the equivalent of the NIH in, in this country, and a sworn uh, Nazi party member. Uh, he was also one of the mentors of the infamous uh, Dr. Mengele. By 1945, more than 2,000 physicians joined the uh, Nazi physician actually by 1929, four years before Hitler became chancellor. Uh, the uh, racial principles were very popular among the physicians and the educated people uh, in uh, Germany at that time. More than 38,000 physicians 
Almost half of all physicians in Germany voluntarily joined the Nazi party by the end of uh, World War II. Uh, it was estimated that about 7 to 35 percent of nurses joined the Nazi party. More than 7 percent of all physicians were members of the SS, uh, Army Wing of the Nazi party. And actually, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the Einsatzgruppe, uh, these were the uh, dead squads, uh, uh, also had many members, many physicians members, and uh, uh, most of them, of the and the squad and the Einsatz group were uh, highly educated individuals that uh, finished uh, college, university, and had academic uh, titles. But this did not preclude them from becoming uh, uh, war criminals. Uh, German physician, nurses, midwives, other medical uh, personnel, and so on, participated willingly in the euthanasia program and in coerced research. The goal ultimately was to create the master race. And here at uh, the German Hygiene Museum in 1940, uh, in all its glory, a graphic rendition of the master race. Adolf Hitler became quickly the people's physician, quote unquote, the Surgeon General, and enacted immediately three laws. Uh, one was the Reich Citizenship Law, the law for the protection of German blood and German honor and the law for the protection, purity of the genetic health of the German people. Uh, the sterilization law in Germany, and the one that sadly was partially adopted by the United States as well, was that anyone suffering from genetically determined illnesses, such as feeble-mindedness, deafness, blindness, severe alcoholism, Huntington disease, schizophrenia, or severe malformation, or any mental uh, disorders uh, uh, should be sterilized. Uh, the Germans sterilized 400 people, 400,000 people. Uh, this is one of the clinics where they would, uh, physicians would, uh, uh, and uh, medical personnel will decide who will be sterilized and who not and later on it moved to euthanasia. And they will mark on a uh, sheet of paper those that had to be sterilized. Euthanized, just a symbol plus, and those that were uh, okay, a symbol minus. Uh, these posters started appearing uh, everywhere. Uh, the, and uh, uh, the Nuremberger uh, Gesetze, uh, the, the laws of Nuremberg, and basically, uh, the uh, Nuremberg Law for the protec Protection of German Blood spe specified, uh, as you can see here, uh, three uh, categories. Those that were pure Germans, uh, mixed, and the third category were Jewish, uh, Jews. Uh, the focus was to eliminate uh, Jews already at that time. And uh, these posters appeared uh, everywhere. Uh, kind of detailing uh, uh, how to how to uh, diagnose or uh, uh, f find out who is Jewish and who not uh, by the hair if the hair was straight or curly uh, if they had uh, 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 blue eyes or uh, brown eyes and uh, so on uh, specific uh, racial features. Uh, were detailed on, on this poster, and uh, everyone that uh, was in the medical field, uh, nurses and physicians, were provided with these very sophisticated pieces of equipment to determine who should leave or who should, who should be sterilized and so on. <clears throat> uh, then this principle was uh, uh, popularized in uh, uh, German in Germany, uh, gesunde Frau, gesundes Volk, which means uh, healthy women, healthy people. And uh, uh, they very much uh, uh, encouraged 
encouraged uh, reproduction and uh, 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 for German women to have as many as possible children. And uh, uh, Hitler awarded Iron Cross of German motherhood to women that had uh, uh, four children, uh, the silver one for six children, and uh, the gold one uh, with Hitler's own signature for women that had uh, more than eight uh, uh, children. Uh, both physicians and nurses that uh, excelled in the field of uh, euthanasia, sterilization, and so on, were awarded uh, also the Iron Cross by Hitler. Nurses and midwife had an additional role uh, prior and uh, during the World War II, and that was uh, uh, the role of racial engineering uh, process and uh, basically selecting racially worthy uh, children that were either born uh, from relationship with SS uh, members and they became orphans, or they had Nordic features, blonde hair, uh, blue eyes. Uh, later babies with uh, uh, Nordic feature, uh, features were kidnapped from their parents in the conquered countries. Uh, it is estimated that about 100,000 children in Europe uh, during World War II were kidnapped and adopted by German uh, families. Uh, this is a separate story, a very sad story with many psychological uh, ramifications. <clears throat> uh, this is a Lebensborn facility, a, uh, one of these facilities where uh, uh, nurses will uh, select the babies that had Nordic features and give them up for adoption, then prepare them at this facility, put them under sun, uh, sun lamps uh, so to uh, make their hair maybe look uh, blonder, uh, and uh, if there is such an expression. And soon thereafter, this poster appeared everywhere. And this was the transition from eugenics to euthanasia. Uh, uh, that the, uh, and the sim uh, this was uh, symbolizing, emphasizing the fact that uh, genetically ill individuals are very costly to the economy of Gen uh, Germany. And a genetically ill individual costs approximately 50,000 uh, Reichsmark, which was a fortune at that time in Germany. And this poster was uh, posted everywhere. Here, someone that uh, was supposed to be uh, mentally uh, challenged, and uh, here a Jewish person depicted as a monkey. The purpose and the goal was to preserve one thing, and, and that was to protect the master race. And uh, uh, Hitler took the next step, which uh, uh, in 1939, in his own handwriting, he ordered uh, the leader of the Reich, uh, Bowler, and Dr. Karl Brandt, who was also Hitler's uh, personal physician, and his handwriting that, uh, uh, that uh, they should uh, to extend the powers of specific doctors in such a way that after the most careful assessment of their condition, those suffering from illnesses deemed to be incurable by the principles of the Nazi government uh, may be granted a mercy dead, and the euthanasia program started. This is the infamous Dr. Karl Brandt, uh, not too many know who he was, but he was, uh, uh, he was a murderer. And uh, he, he, he was uh, sentenced to death at uh, Nuremberg. And also an SS officer, like uh, many of his colleagues, and uh, uh, part of the Schutzstaffel <coughs> staff. On August uh, 1839, the Secret Reich Committee uh, was quickly renamed, ironically, Reich Committee for the Scientific Registering of Serious Hereditary and Congenital Illnesses. Uh, the committee introduced compulsory registrations of malformed newborn children. And uh, uh, doctors, nurses, and midwives uh, were given a, a, an incentive uh, to report 
uh, the individuals that had any of these conditions. 28 institutions were rapidly equipped uh, with extermination facilities in Germany. Included were some of Germany's oldest and most highly respected hospitals and castles. Actually, I visited many of these places and uh, uh, it's chilling to go through the doors of the, uh, these castles. The methods of killing included injections of morphine tablets and gassing with cyanide, uh, chemical warfare uh, agents. Poisons were uh, administered slowly so that the cause of death could not be, uh, uh, could be disguised as pneumonia, bronchitis, or other complication. And children were often uh, slowly starved or left without heat until they froze so they died of so-called natural causes. Uh, this was the, uh, these were the euthanasia centers in Germany uh, prior to the war and during uh, World War II. Uh, I visited this place. It's a photo that I have taken at Hartheim Euthanasia Center. Uh, you won't tell from the outside that over 10,000 uh, children got euthanized here. Uh, you walk through the castle, uh, through the hallways, and uh, it's all sanitized and it looks beautiful. Uh, nurses actually uh, participated, were active participants, uh, enthusiastically active participants in the euthanasia program. At the gas killing euthanasia centers, uh, patients were met by a male or female nurse. Patients were examined photographed and measured, then taken to the gas chamber, which were disguised as shower rooms. And these were all German kids. The nurses had told them that they would be bad. Most patients accepted the nurses' explanation that they were going to the showers. Parents were informed by a standardized letter used at all institutions that their child has died suddenly and unexpectedly of brain edema, appendicitis, or other fabricated causes. The parents were also informed that owing to the danger of an epidemic, the body had to be cremated immediately. On July 41, all doctors, nurses, and medical personnel were ordered to register not just infants, but all minors known to have crippling handicaps. So they wanted to eradicate all the handicaps in Germany. Anyone failing to do so, uh, this uh, was fined uh, with 150 uh, marks. A lot. This is the Hadamar uh, uh, Center, and this is a photograph uh, to, uh, that was taken during the uh, World War II and used as a photo trial exhibit. Uh, you see uh, fumes coming out of the crematoria at the uh, Hadamar Center. Uh, physicians, nurses were active participants in every single phase of euthanasia programs. More than 10,000 people were euthanized by nurses at Hadamar, the uh, photograph that I just sh showed you. When they reached 10,000, they had a big party with champagne and celebrated. Can you imagine that? Uh, most of the nurses or physicians did not see wrong in their actions. The goal was to preserve and protect the master race. Many of the nurses believed they were releasing patients from suffering or just doctor's orders. So that's why the nurses uh, uh, find a little bit ob objectable the Nightingale uh, Pledge, and, uh, uh, which is being changed. Many of the nurses were not uh, punished, with the exception of very few. At the Munich, uh, Munich trial, where the nurses were tried, only 14 were prosecuted. At the Nuremberg uh, trial, 23 physicians were prosecuted. This was uh, Imgard Huber, the chief nurse at Hadamar uh, Institute and her office. You could never tell that this was one of the worst murderers in the history of uh, humankind. Operation 14 F-13, spring of 41, <coughs> killings were expanded to include concentration camp uh, prisoners. <coughs> and they started with uh, 
Russian soldier prisoners, Russian soldiers and officers. The new killing enterprise was designated as special treatment 14 F13. Uh, this was the file number used by the inspectorate of the concentration camp. So from the euthanasia, the, the Germans quickly moved to the final solution. Uh, and the focus was heredity, Minter verdict, uh, the bad genes was the main uh, focus. As we know, six million Jews, including one and a half million children, were selected and exterminated. Uh, many more millions of people were killed and during World War II in, in Europe, uh, uh, Russia uh, alone, uh, close to 12 million people. The Germans had uh, difficulties uh, uh, identifying the Jews or those that had uh, mixed, uh, uh, mixed blood. So, uh, so IBM came to the Nazi assistance uh, and uh, created the punch card. You probably didn't know that uh, these were the first computers that were invented, were invented to diagnose uh, who was a Jew, a Jew and who was not. And uh, the Nazi actually called these uh, punch cards, and uh, Dr. Gabby may still remember the room on the fifth floor where we had punch cards, and uh, uh, the uh, Hollerit punch card uh, at the SS race office in 1942. Rasenamt, okay. <clears throat> at the concentration camps, physicians and nurses had a very central role. The duties and uh, uh, SS physician assisted by nurses sworn to secrecy. And I want, wish to emphasize it has been well documented that they were never forced or never coerced to work there. So it was just they believed they did the right thing. Uh, they were involved in the selection process who was to become a slave labor and who was to go to the crematorium. Uh, they will accompany patients, so-called patients, and Red Cross cars to the crematorium, choose the appropriate number of pellets of gas, observe to the whole the victims uh, were dying. When the uh, victims were dead, order the opening of the gas chambers, sign the form confirming that the victims were dead and how long it took, observe extraction of teeth to recover gold, obtain uh, pathological specimens, and the focus was uh, brain, uh, uh, Mengele and other physicians, German physicians at that time, were convinced that uh, Jews and other inferior races had uh, different brains. And they performed multiple gruesome medical experiments. This is a uh, photograph taken at the uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. Uh, the entrance to the surgery department. Can you believe it? They called it the surgery department. Uh, they should have called it, called it the, the horror department. Uh, Dr. Miklos Nishli, an assistant to Dr. Mengele, gave testimony of the first twin experiment, the horrendous uh, uh, twin experiments that were conducted in the surgery department. And he said, Dr. Mengele didn't say a single word to us. The first twin was brought in, a 14-year-old girl. And I believe it was a Roma girl, a gypsy girl. Dr. Mengele ordered me to undress the girl and put her head on the dissecting table. Then he injected Evipal IV into her right arm. The child has fallen asleep. He then injected chloroform into the heart. One little twitch, and the child was dead. Whereupon, Dr. Mengele removed the eyes and other organs. The removed organs were shipped to the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin and marked war materials urgent. This is one of the accompanying uh, forms, this Mengele's own handwriting and uh, description. These were uh, uh, Roma twins uh, in this photograph. 
Other medical experiments uh, were conducted. Many of them, the main objective was to test extreme uh, condition to the benefit of the Nazi uh, army, because they were losing pilots and uh, infectious disease and uh, all kinds of other problems. Hypothermia experiments at Dachau began, began in October 42 by Dr. Rascher, assisted by University of Kiel uh, professors. Uh, the data on hypothermia survival was presented at the annual meeting of the Luftwaffe service in Nuremberg. There were 95 physicians in attendance. Here, uh, a Russian prisoner uh, being immersed in ice water, and here observing how long it took until he died. Uh, other um, experiments conducted at Dachau was deadly altitude decompressions uh, to determine at what altitude uh, decompression occurs to benefit the, the German pilots. Uh, also, uh, uh, since a lot of the German pilots will uh, uh, end up in the uh, ocean or uh, sea, they wanted to see how long uh, it, one can survive on just drinking seawater, and that's a number of days, or uh, what will happen if uh, uh, seawater is uh, injected uh, IV. Uh, other uh, experiments were conducted uh, on more than 1,000 healthy inmates, uh, malaria, they will take uh, uh, blood uh, from uh, individuals affected by malaria in North Africa and inject it in uh, healthy inmates. Uh, blood coagulation uh, experiments. Uh, one uh, very gruesome experiment uh, that was conducted, uh, some of the most gruesome experiments that were conducted were at the Ravensburg, uh, probably not too many of you heard of that place, but that was the only women concentration camp. Dr. Carl, Professor Carl Gebhardt, assisted by nurse uh, Gerda Kurnheim, infected uh, man-made uh, wounds. Here you can see one uh, to test antibiotics, but one of the most gruesome experiments that they conducted at Ra Ravensburg, they will amputate uh, legs of healthy women and then uh, try to reattach them to the same women. Uh, it didn't work, of course, but this was absolutely horrible what they did at that camp. Uh, at Buchenwald and uh, Natzweiler concentration camp, they experimented on uh, vaccines, uh, uh, yellow fever, typhus, uh, TB, typhoid fever, spotted fever, hepatitis, and other. Uh, they also conducted uh, burn experiments at uh, Buchenwald. They will burn people on purpose and uh, see how long it takes to die and how to, uh, how to uh, heal these burns. Uh, sterilization experiments were conducted at Auschwitz. The purpose of the experiments was to perfect a technique in which non-Aryans could be prevented from reproducing while still being able to work as slave workers. <clears throat> uh, Nazi physician, actually Professor Karl uh, Klauberg was a very well-known gynecologist in Germany, uh, published many articles, books, and Dr. Sch uh, Schumann and uh, nurse uh, would inject caustic, toxic chem chemical into the uteri of uh, women and uh, also conduct testicle irradiation experiments on prisoners in uh, in the medical building at uh, Auschwitz, uh, block, block 10. Uh, Nazi medicine and the historical facts, which are still approximate, about 400,000 German patients selected and euthanized. 5,000 5, German children selected and euthanized. Only 15% of all patients in German mental hospitals, imagine, at the start of World War II survived. These were all German uh, uh, citizens. 98,000 cruel and murderous medical experiments. After the war, <clears throat> the question came up, should Nazi medical data obtained from concentration camp victims, should it be used? And they should consider what informed consent, scientific validity, moral and ethical uh, uh, issues, 
should be published or quoted. It was decided not to. So it was never published, but uh, also not much publicized and not too many know about it. I believe that all physicians should know how quickly uh, the art of medicine can deteriorate into a uh, murderous profession. At Auschwitz, there were also pregnant women. Uh, there were, uh, over the years, about uh, uh, 3,000 deliveries there, more than 3,000 deliveries. It's known that about 16 children have survived there, uh, these deliveries. Stanislav Lalezinska, who was a Catholic uh, uh, nurse midwife, uh, she, she was interned there as well. She delivered herself 3,000 babies. Uh, she was instructed by Mengele, she was an assistant to Mengele, to drown the newborns in a, bar a barrel. She refused. And he knew about it, but uh, uh, somehow he had some appreciation for her technical abilities. There was another nurse midwife there. There were only two. Her name was, uh, you know, her first name, Clara. She, she, she had no problems drowning the newborns. Uh, and she was uh, interned there as a criminal. Uh, Stanislavla is a candidate for canonization by the Vatican. She was an absolute saint. She will hide the, uh, uh, wrap the babies in, uh, in the newspapers and uh, hide them between the uh, women's uh, uh, legs. Um, a little history about Ukraine and Vinitsa and uh, what some other physicians and nurses have done. Uh, Vinica probably is not well known to you, but this uh, uh, was the uh, place where Hitler, where they built for Hitler the uh, East Front Wern, uh, Wer Werfolf uh, uh, bunker. Uh, so he was supposed to observe and direct the uh, uh, battles on the East Front. And at uh, Vinitsa, uh, uh, they build this bunker. They use uh, slave work. Uh, uh, a lot of the slave workers uh, interned in concentration camps uh, build that uh, bunker. I visited the place. Uh, the bunker was uh, blown up by the Germans uh, as soon as they started losing the war. And uh, it's amazing how much uh, uh, concrete was used there. And um, they killed all the, the uh, workers or the slave workers that participated there uh, and, and building the bunker were executed immediately after the bunker was completed. And uh, also uh, uh, they uh, 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 killed, they executed the architects and the engineers so nobody will know uh, uh, the secrets of the bunker. Uh, close by in a town called Vinica, uh, the Einsatzgruppe uh, D, this was a uh, uh, dead squad, uh, physicians among them as well, uh, uh, wanted to make, a, uh, they sent a letter to Hitler, said that we have a surprise for you, a special gift. And the special gift uh, was to clean Vinica of Jews and kill all the Jews in town. So they, uh, they, they indeed did. Uh, they also went to the maternity hospital where they asked the uh, physicians and nurses to identify the Jewish mothers. Uh, they executed the Jewish mothers. And they ordered the midwives uh, to, uh, to kill the babies. So the babies were uh, put in sacks and thrown in the streets like unwanted kitties. Uh, very close there, uh, the Germans uh, were building uh, the Durchgangstrasse. Uh, Durchgangstrasse was one of the first uh, freeways in the world. And uh, Hitler envis envisioned a freeway from Berlin all the way to uh, Stalingrad at that time and uh, Moscow. And uh, uh, not far from there, there were many uh, slave uh, concentration camps. And uh, my parents were interned at uh, this place in Bershad. 
uh, uh, and they worked on, on this uh, freeway. Um, this uh, camp in 1941, <clears throat> they had about 21,000 people interned there. Basically, these were uh, uh, abandoned uh, Ukrainian villages. And uh, I actually visited for the first time uh, this place this past summer. It's in the middle of nowhere. There are no roads to get there to this day. Uh, you can understand why the Germans lost the war there, because there were no roads, and uh, they got uh, stuck in the mud of uh, Ukraine. And um, at liberations uh, of the, this camp, uh, only 5,000 survived, and I was one of the survivors. And we believe, I was born not uh, far from this house in a barn, uh, and uh, then my parents, uh, when so many people died, my parents moved to this place. There were about 40, 40 uh, inmates that lived in this abandoned house. So, uh, a um, well-known uh, artist, uh, painter, uh, he has his paintings also in uh, Washington, D.C., and at the Yad Vashem uh, uh, Holocaust Museum in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, uh, he was interned in this camp, and he, he, here is a uh, painting made by him in the, in the camp. He had some crayons and so on, and it preserved his uh, paintings. But what caught my attention is what he, uh, he uh, wrote underneath. He says, the, harshers, the harsher the rules against living, the stronger was the desire of the deportees to live. And this is the uh, staff at Auschwitz, uh, relaxing after hours of killings. So you can see they, they don't look much different than you and I, but they killed billions of people. Uh, Nazi criminal physicians and nurses, in total 5,025 Nazi men and women were convicted, 23 physicians were tried, uh, seven uh, acquitted, seven received the death sentence, among them Karl uh, 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 Brandt, the Hitler's physician. And uh, uh, here is he testifying at the Nuremberg uh, uh, doctor's trials. Um, the questions came up after the war, how could physicians and nurses uh, trained as healers become killers? The justifications for medical killing was the concept of life unworthy of life. Dr. Lifton, who was a psychiatrist, interviewed every single one of the uh, Nuremberg uh, uh, criminals that uh, were uh, imprisoned at Nuremberg. <clears throat> and gave the, uh, these answers the moral failures of physicians and nurses during Nazi regimes in Europe was the adoption of eugenics as a pseudoscience, adoption and the implementation of raw uh, race laws and forced sterilization, adoption and participation in the euthanasia program and mass extermination, participation in sadistic and deadly experiments without consent, a distortion of truth, and the slippery slope. Could it reoccur? And I will claim yes. The Nuremberg Code, and there are very few physicians, sadly, that know that the informed consent that we use right now on medical wards originates at Nuremberg, mandated by the judges at Nuremberg Code, and that's what they mandated. They mandated the voluntary, well-informed understanding consent. The experiment should aim at positive results for the society, should be based on previously knowledge, on previous knowledge, avoid unnecessary physical or mental injuries, should not be con uh, conducted when there is risk of death or disabling injury, should be in proportion to humanitarian benefits, preparation and facilities must be provided, and so on. Medical staff, uh, staff must stop 
experiment at any point if continuation could be dangerous. This is where the informed consent originated. Could it reoccur? I would like to briefly uh, discuss with you the genome project and the controversies. Uh, the genome project has placed heredity central to the understanding and prevention of disease etiology while remaining committed to the highest ethical standards. However, genomics as it evolved did not embrace political uh, racial pro uh, projects like eugenics or Darwinism. However, if not regulated, it certainly could. We know that uh, each individual carries hundreds of potentially harmful gene variations, thousands of coding uh, variants, millions of uninterpretable variants and non-coding regions of the genome. Actually, the Nazis would have uh, been petrified to find out uh, if this study would have been available during, uh, prior and during World War II, and a study conducted by hack on 100,000 pregnant uh, women, that Northern European, which the Germans are, have a higher uh, percentage of risk or affected by single gen disease than Ashkenazi Jews. And uh, uh, this brings us to the CRISPR quandary. And what the CRISPR experiment mean to humanity. Uh, CRISPR, for those of you that may not, may not know it, it's a repair, modify, or enhance uh, RNA uh, procedure. It's basically cut and paste. Uh, and uh, eliminate bad genes, uh, repair, and introduce others. Uh, CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. The applications, genome editing, transcription regulation, and gene therapy. Uh, the challenges are the off-target mutations, the PAM dependence, the delivery methods, and certainly unethical applications. And the big news came in uh, 2015 when scientists at the uh, Sun Yat-sen University in China published a dramatic new study in the Journal of Protein Cell. They had used CRISPR to edit the DNA of non-viable embryos for good or for ill, China is set to lead the way for human enhancement, uh, to create individuals, probably with blonde hair, blue eyes, and big muscles, uh, create smarter, fitter, and more violent humans. It is now possible to identify the genes that make someone smarter, physically fitter, or more violent. All geogenics and positive encourage reproduction of advantageous hereditary traits. Negative discourages reproduction of poor heredity traits. Could a new eugenics movement reemerge? Yes, it could in some parts of the world. Potentially resource driven by unethical scientists, politicians, and others and promote special design features for health, intelligence, aggression, or other. Could the master race concept reemerge? I, I say yes, Jim, but I'm not the only one. Jim Clapper, the former director of the US intelligence agency, uh, came on record as saying, research and <clears throat> genome editing by countries with different regulatory standards increases the risk of the creation of potentially harmful biological agents. Given the broad distribution, low cost, and dual use technology, there are far reaching economic and national security implications. Do it yourself. You could do it. CRISPR kits available for $100. 
In 2015, the CEO of one of the companies in the States that is involved in CRISPR technology decided to abandon and not to uh, conduct these experiments or work any longer. And he came on record as saying, we are humans, not transgenic rats. The principle of ethical research, science advances and applications come with a set of benefits, risks, ethical issues, societal and regulatory implications. A new federal policy for a new uh, informed consent, actually the new common rule, is supposed to come up uh, this year in 2018. It was uh, delayed for a few months. I don't know the reasons. Now, remember, it didn't start with gas chambers. It started with politicians dividing the people, with us versus them. It started with intolerance and hate speech. And when people stopped caring, became desensitized and turned a blind eye. I would like to conclude in the words of Elie Wiesel, uh, who I had the privilege to know. And he used to say, <clears throat> the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of beauty is not ugliness, it's indifference. The opposite of sacred is not profane, it's indifference. Action is the only re remedy to indifference, the most insidious danger of all. I thank you very much, and it was an honor to be here today.